Hello et bienvenue. We are the creative committee for the Canadian Women's Brass Collective. On est super contente de vous offrir quelques présentations spéciales. We are professional musicians who have joined forces to celebrate our mutual love and commitment to the world of brass. We are performers, educators, researchers, and conductors. We are soloists, members of orchestras, chamber groups, military bands, new music, and early music ensembles. Our aim is to raise awareness of gender diversity, to foster positive attitudes, and to provide inspiration and role models for the next generation. In 2019, we met for our first conference, That's What She Said, a week of master classes, workshops, roundtable discussions, an excerpt competition, and of course, concerts. You can check out videos from That's What She Said and past online events on our YouTube channel. Plus, join our Facebook or Instagram to find out about our upcoming events. Nous sommes fiers de partager nos idées avec vous aujourd'hui. We would love to hear from you. Please comment or ask questions in the chat on any of our platforms and we'll do our best to answer them all. We are working on future online events, so send us any topics or suggestions that you would like us to cover. All ideas are welcome. Thanks for joining us. We are the Canadian Women's Brass Collective. Anine! Bonjour, hello. J'aimerais commencer par reconnaître avec profond respect et gratitude tous les territoires traditionnels des premiers peuples, qu'ils soient métis, inuit ou premières nations, où nous sommes tous en tant que participants et participantes situés aujourd'hui et que la relation historique qu'ils ont avec la terre continue. Jusqu'à présent. I would like to begin with by acknowledging the traditional territories of the First Peoples, may they be Inuit, Métis, or First Nations, where we are all as participants situated today, and that their historic relationship with the land continues to this day. Now, we're going to hear Captain Megan Hodge of the Queen's Own Rifles of Canada with a word of introduction. Ma'am, on to you. Hi, thank you for that. My name is Megan Hodge and I am a trombonist with the Canadian Women's Brass Collective Artistic Committee. I'm a freelance trombonist in Toronto and I teach at the University of Toronto. I wanna to welcome you to this edition of That's What She Said Online. We are very excited to be hosting the music branch of the Canadian Armed Forces. So I mentioned that I am a trombonist, but I'm also a member of the Canadian Armed Forces. I'm the director of music for the Queen's Own Rifles of Canada and at the rank of captain, I've been serving for 20 years. Serving as a musician in the military is a fantastic job filled with opportunities for full and part-time employment from performing on Parliament Hill to parades in Normandy, France, to supporting our local community at events, we see it all. And today is a day to explore and get to know this part of the musical community. Now, one thing you, the military is famous for are acronyms. And when someone uses an acronym today, like CAF for Canadian Armed Forces, feel free to throw a comment into the chat and we will be sure to clarify. Um, we hope you enjoy the performances, presentations, and panel discussions from our women in uniform today. And please let us know your thoughts or questions as we take a look at the music branch of the Canadian Armed Forces. Thank you. Je suis le lieutenant colonel Charles Gaudreau, surveillant de musique au sein des Forces Armées Canadiennes. À mon nom personnel et celui de l'adjudant chef de la branche des services de musique, c'est-à-dire l'adjudant chef Heidi Drummond. Nous tenons à remercier toutes les musiciennes militaires.
Je suis le lieutenant-colonel Charles Godreau, surveillant des musiques au sein des Forces armées canadiennes. À mon nom personnel et celui de l'adjudant-chef de la branche des services de musique, c'est-à-dire l'adjudant-chef Heidi Drummond, nous tenons à remercier toutes les musiciennes militaires pour leur participation à cet événement. Vous savez, l'une des fonctions principales au sein de la branche des services de musique est de nous assurer du professionnalisme et de la santé des professions musicales au sein des Forces armées canadiennes. À cet effet, on ne saurait trop insister sur l'importance d'être un employeur ouvert aux différences culturelles et soutenant le personnel en uniforme. Dans les dernières semaines, vous avez pu voir certains de nos plus récents succès qui ont été démontrés à travers des vidéos et des profils des musiciens qui ont été partagés en ligne avant la tenue de notre activité d'aujourd'hui. Et aujourd'hui même, nous allons entendre en grande première une nouvelle composition intitulée « Fanfare for Brass » du maître de deuxième classe, Robin Dutra. Cette composition sera interprétée par des femmes de la force régulière, ainsi que la première réserve des trois éléments, soit de la marine, de l'armée de terre et de la force aérienne. Aujourd'hui, nous célébrons ces femmes qui jouent un rôle essentiel dans le succès de toutes les musiques des forces armées canadiennes partout au pays, ainsi qu'à l'étranger. Je tiens à remercier le Canadian Women's Brass Collective d'avoir invité nos membres à participer à leur série en ligne « That's what she said ». J'espère que vous serez bénéficié de ces échanges aujourd'hui et que cette journée vous plaira beaucoup. Merci pour votre temps et je vous souhaite une excellente journée à vous tous. My name is Chief Warrant Officer Heidi Twaman and I am the Canadian Armed Forces Music Branch Chief Warrant Officer. The Supervisor of Music for the Canadian Armed Forces, Lieutenant Colonel Charles Goudreau and I would like to thank all the military musicians for their participation in this event. As you know, one of the principal roles of the music branch is to ensure the professionalism and health of our music occupations is maintained within the Canadian Armed Forces. And the importance of being an employer which embraces cultural differences and supports all of our personnel in uniform cannot be overstated. Recent successes were demonstrated in the various videos and players' profiles shared online in the lead up to today's event. As well, we will hear Here the premiere of a new composition titled Fanfare for Brass by Petty Officer Second Class Robin Jutra, performed by women of the regular force and primary reserve from the Navy Je suis le lieutenant-colonel Charles Godreau, surveillant des musiques au sein des Forces armées canadiennes. À mon nom personnel et celui de l'adjudant-chef de la branche des services de musique, c'est-à-dire l'adjudant-chef Heidi Twoman, nous tenons à remercier toutes les musiciennes militaires pour leur participation à cet événement. Vous savez, l'une des fonctions principales au sein de la branche des services de musique est de nous assurer du professionnalisme et de la santé des professions musicales au sein des Forces armées canadiennes. À cet effet, on ne saurait trop insister sur l'importance d'être un employeur ouvert aux différences culturelles et soutenant le personnel en uniforme. 
Dans les dernières semaines, vous avez pu voir certains de nos plus récents succès qui ont été démontrés à travers des vidéos et des profils des musiciens qui ont été partagés en ligne avant la tenue de notre activité d'aujourd'hui. Et aujourd'hui même, nous allons entendre en grande première une nouvelle composition intitulée « Fanfare for Brass » du maître de deuxième classe Robin Jutra. Cette composition sera interprétée par des femmes de la force régulière, ainsi que la première réserve des trois éléments, soit de la marine, de l'armée de terre et de la force aérienne. Aujourd'hui, nous célébrons ces femmes qui jouent un rôle essentiel dans le succès de toutes les musiques des forces armées canadiennes partout au pays, ainsi qu'à l'étranger. Je tiens à remercier le Canadian Women's Brass Collective d'avoir invité nos membres à participer à leur série en ligne « That's what she said ». Je sais que la diffusion en direct d'aujourd'hui sera stimulante et dynamique alors que nous apprenons de leur expérience et mettons en lumière ces femmes exceptionnelles de la branche des services de musique des Forces armées canadiennes. J'espère que vous serez bénéficiés de ces échanges aujourd'hui et que cette journée vous plaira beaucoup. Merci pour votre temps et je vous souhaite une excellente journée à vous tous. My name is Chief Warrant Officer Heidi Twaman, and I am the Canadian Armed Forces Music Branch Chief Warrant Officer. The Supervisor of Music for the Canadian Armed Forces, Lieutenant Colonel Charles Goudreau and I would like to thank all the military musicians for their participation in this event. As you know, one of the principal roles of the Music Branch is to ensure the professionalism and health of our music occupations is maintained within the Canadian Armed Forces. And the importance of being an employer which embraces cultural differences and supports all of our personnel in uniform cannot be overstated. Recent successes were demonstrated in the various videos and players' profiles shared online in the lead up to today's event. As well, we will hear the premiere of a new composition titled Fanfare for Brass by Petty Officer Second Class Robin Jutra performed by women of the regular force and primary reserve from the Navy, Army, and Air Force. Today, we celebrate some of the women who played a vital role in the success of all Canadian Armed Forces bands across the country. And I'd like to thank the Canadian Women's Brass Collective for inviting our members to participate in their That's What She Said online series. I am positive today's live stream panel will be thought provoking and dynamic as we learn about their experiences and highlight some of the outstanding women of the Canadian Armed Forces Music Branch. Thank you for your time today and I wish you all a wonderful day. Wow, that was beautiful. Congratulations, everybody. You, did you all participate in that video? I think you did. I think I seem to have seen all of you. That's wonderful. Uh, such beautiful tune, too. Um, so today is 
our our well right now it's our first session of four sessions and our first session is really just to get to know you so um what we're going to do is uh we're going to hear from our panelists um tell describe themselves and tell us their journey into the uh, military, the Canadian Armed Forces, and they will tell us a little bit more about, you know, what they've learned and maybe tricks that they can pass on to us uh, if uh, if we're thinking of that that path as a career option. So uh, welcome everybody, and um, let's hear from you. Who wants to start? Well, I see Allison making a big smile at me like this, so. Sure, I can start. Um... Well, Marie-Pierre looks <laughs> like. Marie okay, okay. So now it's Allison. Okay, so my name is Allison Zakowski, and I'd heard a lot of uh, a lot of my friends doing summer jobs with the military while I was in school, but. I was never able to commit to the entire summer while I was in school. And once I finished my master's in music, I didn't have a job. <laughs> so that's kind of what brought me here. I thought, well, I might as well at least get a part-time job with the Army Reserves. And when I auditioned for the Army Reserves, I found out you can do this full time. So I know there must be other people out there like me who didn't know that. <laughs> and I just want you guys to know that. So, um, yeah. So then I spent some time in the reserves and when there was an opening, then I auditioned for the regular forces and now I do this every day, which is great. Um, did, uh, were there any specific questions that you wanted me to cover introducing myself? Yes, uh, yes, of, of course. Uh, if you want to give us, uh, for example, um, um, I think that's one thing that is uh, common to all of us is that we have to go through the gauntlet of basic training. And we all hear about this, especially in movies, and it's always over dramatized. But uh, I was wondering uh, what would what was your perspective of uh, that experience? And um, if you have any advice to give to people who are thinking of going through this. Uh, yeah, actually, I was hoping you would ask me about basic training. And it's exactly that. It's not at all like the movies. It's not all push-ups in the mud and being yelled at. There was actually hardly any of that. Um, I mean, I'm speaking about my basic. So there's different experiences out there with basic training and everybody, yeah, everybody's going to have a different experience. But for myself, I did basic training with the ceremonial guard, which I would recommend is the best way to do basic training, I think, because the reality is, is that you're doing basic training with a bunch of other musicians who you're going to work with. And so that probably minimized the amount of push-ups that we did in the mud and stuff like that since <laughs> we need to work together a month later or two months later and get along and make music together. So like the vision or the, the image that you see in movies, there wasn't really a lot of that. I actually kept waiting for it to happen and it didn't happen. Um, what else was I gonna say? I forget. <laughs> That's okay. Oh yeah, but so if if you have a choice uh, and you have the time, I would recommend joining the reserves and doing basic training through the reserves, and then it makes your transition into the regular forces a little bit smoother and easier. Cool. Thank you, uh, Allison. Maybe we can hear from somebody else. We'll have questions at the end, by the way. So. Um, I will just uh, encourage our listeners to uh, write down their questions and they will be vetted and uh, passed on to me a little later. Um, so who else is ready to talk? I guess Natalie is. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I can talk. I tend to talk too much, so feel free to put a hand up. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
yeah, my own experience in the military. Um, I joined the reserves after my first year um, at McGill. So I saw they were uh, coming around doing auditions for the ceremonial guard. So um, that seemed like a good idea. I'd heard a little bit about it. So I did those auditions um, and got that job. So I did basic training in May 2005. Uh, I did ceremonial guard that summer. And then following, following my first summer ceremonial guard, um, like a lot of people, um, when I went back to university, I joined um, a reserves unit uh, in the city where I was going to school. So I worked with uh, the Fusée Montréal for my second, third, and fourth year of my undergrad. Um, so it's like a one rehearsal a week and some gigs, and it's a great way to help pay for your school <laughs> and just, you know, diverse repertoire, meet friends. But uh, yeah, so I got to do um, the reserves in that way. And then I went, uh, I went to Boston actually to do my master's. So then I was uh, uh, something called the supplementary reserves. So anyone can correct me if I'm wrong, but the way I kind of think of it is it's kind of like putting your military career on hold. <laughs> so uh, because I was out of the country and not for working with the military. So yeah, I was uh, sub reserves for about three years almost until I uh, did the audition for the regular force job, which is what I do now. So in September 2011, I um, won that job and was first posted to the Statacona Band of the Royal Canadian Navy. So I went to Halifax first, which is great because I'm from Nova Scotia. So they sent me home <laughs> um, and I was there for four years. So I was in the Navy there. Oh yeah, that's, that's an interesting thing too, because uh, Musicians are what is called a purple trade. So in the reserves, I was in the army. Um, and when I first got my regular force job, I was in a Navy band uh, for four years. And then uh, after four years there, I was posted to Ottawa, which is where I am now with the Central Band of Canadian Armed Forces, which is an Air Force band. So now I have a lot of uniforms. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, and and it's just neat to, to experience the different uh, aspects of each of those. But uh, yeah, so I am in the Central Band of Canadian Armed Forces. I play French horn and I sing. Um, yeah. That's, That's wonderful. Questions? <laughs> so much talent. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think I will just keep the questions for the end. Um, yeah, I was just kind of taken a, a, um, a little bit by surprise earlier <laughs> with questions. <laughs> I uh, will, uh, yes, I think now we have an, an order. So next person will be Marie-Pierre, I think. Yes. Hi, everyone. Yes. Uh, so you'll hear from my accent that I'm from Quebec. Um, <laughs> so I'll do my best. Uh, bear with me. Uh, so I want to go back to before I joined. So I was uh, doing my... Um, my bachelor's degree in jazz performance in Sherbrooke. And I had lots of friends that would join the reserve unit over there. So the Le Fusilier de Sherbrooke. And I, and I still have lots of friends that are in that reserve unit over there. And I kept seeing them going to rehearsals and having gigs and stuff. And I really thought that this is this was not for me. I thought because I thought army, right? This like I'm an artist, I want to be free and I want to do my thing and I don't want to join, right? And so then I also put my studies on hold to go on a, a big a contract in Paris for a couple months, a musical contract. And then when I came back, I almost finished my bachelor's degree and then I joined because I was like anxious of what's going on. Like I have a degree, what am I going to do as a trumpet player in real life, right? Because sometimes you don't want to think about it during your, your studies, but then you need to jump into reality and think about what's going on, what's happening next. So I joined and I joined with the, um, I did my, uh, I did my basic training also with the ceremonial guard in Ottawa. And I also think like Allison, that it's the way to go for a musician anyway, because it's shorter. I would, well, I could say easier. I thought it was pretty intense, even though it was just a musician's uh, basic training, just a musician's basic training. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> But I felt like it was short and it was really oriented towards the fact that we had to be on Farmant Hill afterwards. So it was, uh, it, I really liked the drive that it, 
it and it just kept going and I really enjoyed it. So I enjoyed my basic training. And then I thought, why didn't I think that this is what this was for me, right? Because I got to work out, I got to play my horn, I got to meet great musicians, great friends. Um, so when I like the first summer I was in, I thought this is this is exactly for me. And then at some point we went to the Halifax tattoo, and then which is a big, big um event that happens every year with bands all over the world and then i saw the i saw the poster for the for the reg force auditions so i didn't know either that i could do that as a full-time job and then i did the auditions and so did my boyfriend now husband he did at the time right and he got he got in and i did not win that audition but we had told each other if you win the audition i follow you and vice versa so he won the audition and he was posted to, to winnipeg Yay! So I was like, well, I, I said I was following, so I followed. And then the year after, we were in, in Winnipeg for a year, and I and I switched to a Navy uh, Reserve unit here in Winnipeg. So I also have, Natalie, I also have lots of uniforms <laughs> from going back to Air Force, uh, to Army, then Navy. And so I did the audition, and I got in the Reg Force as well. So I switched back to Air Force. And we were back in uh, Quebec for a couple of years. And now this summer we were just posted back here in Winnipeg. So um, my husband is also still in the band. So we're both uh, in the RCF band now. And I'm a trumpet player. Cool. That's awesome. Thank you, Marie-Pierre. Um, we have four more people to hear before we can hear questions. So I'm going to ask uh, Madeline to uh, give us uh, her uh, little story. Hello everyone, um, I'm Madeline and I'm a trombone player. I'm a, in the reserve, so uh, I'm basically the first, I think, that uh, didn't get into Reg Force or not yet. Um, yeah, so I'm from Quebec City, uh, as you can hear from my accent as well as Marie-Pierre. <laughs> uh, and I joined um, in 2009, actually, uh, I, I kind of didn't know what I was getting into, because uh, in Quebec, uh, I went to the Conservatoire and uh, the Voltigeur de Quebec Armories burned in 2008. So the Voltigeurs band were uh, rehearsing on the Wednesdays at the Conservatoire. So I was aware of people practicing there um, uh, in the military and I had few friends that were um, uh, in the band that were studying with me at the Conservatoire. So they were talking a bit about it, but I didn't really know what was uh, like playing in a band in the military. They didn't know what to do, uh, what they was actually they were doing at that time. And I saw an ad for uh, the ceremonial guard, as all the others had before. So I decided to audition, and I got in. And um, I decided uh, I had to go through the uh, enrollment process in a month. Uh, in order to go to um, my basic as well as uh, at CG with actually with Allison, uh, we did it together. And at that time, I wasn't speaking English at all, so <laughs> I went to <laughs> I went to uh, Ottawa. Uh, my mom drove me there. She was crying. She didn't know what to do. What what I was doing there it was pretty funny. I actually had a lot of fun on basic, uh, and I had to learn English at that time. So, uh, for all the French people who's listening, everything's possible. Now I'm uh, <laughs> I'm on a panel of speaking English, so I guess it's it, it has worked. So since then, since uh, 2009, uh, I'm in um, uh, uh, the band of Le Vertical de Québec. Um, and I'm playing trombone uh, and euphonium as well uh, since a few years. And uh, that's it. And in my civilian uh, life, I'm actually on a class B. I know we can't say like acronyms and stuff, but I'm on a permanent contract doing admin, but still playing in the band um, for, the, for the army. But I'm a, I'm a trombone teacher at uh, Cégep de Saint-Foy, which is uh, the Quebec version of between high school and university. College, college. Ah, uh, yeah, college, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm teaching in college trombone, uh, classical trombone. So that's it. Hey, merci, Madeleine. De rien. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the next person is Esther. Hi, everyone. 
my name is Esther Q and uh, my pronouns are she, her, and I am a French Hornist in the Queen's Own Rifles of Canada, Canada's long-standing continuous serving uh, infantry regiment. So um, yeah, I, I am also part of the reserve force, which means that my commitment to the military is part-time. Uh, the demands of the job usually include one training night, which in our training night, because my trade is musician, uh, we are rehearsing most of the time. So it is awesome. It's awesome to be paid to play. Um, yeah, and though my official instrument with the ensemble is French horn, I am also a vocalist for the group. So we're a really unique group because other than our traditional, you know, wind, uh, concert wind ensemble and marching things that we do, our band also developed a pop band to increase engagement with the public. So you might see us around Toronto sometime. Um, like a lot of my colleagues here, I became interested in the Canadian Armed Forces when I saw a lot of U of T students, which is where I was studying at the time, uh, joining the ceremonial guard at, in Ottawa for the summer. And at first I rejected the idea also for about three, four years. Um, my mom was a huge proponent of me joining because she was very, very supportive. And I liked the idea of traveling to Ottawa and of course getting paid. Um, so I was sworn into the Canadian Armed Forces in April, 2014, two days before my 22nd birthday. And five days later, I went on to my first Army Corps. So it was very, very quick. Um, the ceremonial guard program has really helped this broke student become less broke. And I've actually met lifelong friends uh, through the program and have had the opportunity of working with the best musicians. So it's been, it was quite a, a great starting point for me in the military. Um, after two years of ceremonial guard, my third summer, I worked with the RCA band in Edmonton. So the Royal Canadian Artillery Band. And that year we traveled to Somme, France for the 100th year commemoration of the Battle of beaumont -Temel. And it was an amazing summer and it's been one of my highlights in my career for sure. So on the civilian side of things, I'm a music educator who teaches music and social sciences to students from JKs to grade 12 in the Toronto region. I'm currently back to being a broke student, just as I was when I joined CG, <laughs> working on my master's of arts in music education at U of T. Uh, and yeah, other than that, I really like to cook and eat and spend time with my partner. And I'm excited to chat and share my experience today with you. Oh, thank you, Esther. It's <laughs> wonderful to have you with us. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah. Um, so well, we're going to hear from Leslie and then Emily. Hello. Hi, Leslie. Hi, I'm uh, Master Corporal Leslie Perrin. I play the tuba and I'm a member of the Governor General's Foot Guards, uh, which is a an Army Reserve band in Ottawa. Um, I'm currently actually working with the Naden Band of the Royal Canadian Navy uh, in Victoria, which is awesome. I'm on a full-time temporary contract, uh, which I can speak more to in the later sessions. Um, but my journey to the Canadian Armed Forces started about 11 years ago uh, when a recruiter from Her Majesty's Canadian Ship Star, which is a Navy Reserve Band from Hamilton, uh, this recruiter came to speak at a wind ensemble rehearsal during my first year of university at uh, at Laurier. And prior to this experience, I had no idea what the Canadian Armed Forces was about. My perception was um, very much that it was exclusively uh, for combat arms trades. I had no idea you could do it part time and I had no idea that you could do it as a musician. Um, so when this recruiter spoke to getting paid to play your instrument, and getting to travel the country and perform um, all over the place and all these great perks like paid training, um, instruments provided by the reserve unit uh, and all these things I was like, oh my God, where do I sign? Um, so I, I did, I, I did an audition um, with the, the HMCS star band and uh, started the enrollment process. And in 2012, I did nine weeks of basic training um, which is a little bit longer than, than some of the other courses that are running now. Um, and I, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. Again, um, not having that, that prior 
uh, background. And um, there were definitely moments when, when you know, you're, you're up for 48 hours straight thinking, what did I get myself into? Uh, but I really found that my musical training helped to prepare me for basic training. Um, teamwork is a very important aspect of uh, military life. And performing in ensembles with uh, working closely with other people really uh, helped me with that. Uh, the discipline, time management skills that you need as a musician, um, those really helped me get through it. Uh, and then once you get through it, you come you come back on the other side uh, feeling unstoppable, like you can do anything. And I definitely take that confidence and um, I feel much more assertive. Uh, and more resilient, and I take that to my practice as a musician. Uh, so since finishing basic training, I have gone to the Canadian Forces School of Music uh, in Borden uh, for musical training. Uh, I've also been a participant of the Ceremonial Guard. I've worked with Emily and Esther, so it's so awesome to see you here today. Um, I've been part of the National Band of the Naval Reserve, uh, which is a summer contract uh, where the musicians from the Navy Reserve bands come together on a cross-country tour uh, playing at uh, the Royal Nova Scotia International Tattoo, which th is just this big um, uh, spectacular military showcase. Uh, they're also civilian performers. So it's so cool to be part of this, uh, a cast of about 2000 performers uh, performing every night for about two weeks for thousands of people. Um, as a, I, I've actually sort of become what I like to call a career reservist. So while the commitment is only part time, the, the, the requirement is only part time, there are so many opportunities uh, to work full time or to take contracts here and there or experiment with uh, with different things. So I've actually gotten to instruct basic training, uh, which was a really, really rewarding experience. Um, yeah. And let me just check my notes here. I would say my advice to, to people who are considering is definitely go for it if you if you have a sense of adventure. Um, prepare yourself physically. It's very basic training is very um, physically and mentally demanding. So you want to be in shape before you get there and uh, definitely take your experiences as a musician. All those skills, they apply uh, to to basic training for sure. Cool. Yeah. Thank you, Leslie. That's uh, actually very, um, I, I like that each of you have touched a different thing that can be very useful for our audience. Thank you. It's like funny because you didn't get to uh, consult with each other. Now we're going to hear Emily. And after that, we're going to hear, we're, we're going to send questions your way. <laughs> Sounds good. So there you go. Yeah. Okay. Hi, my name is Sailor First Class Emily Bellman. Those are the new Navy ranks out now. Um, I'm a trumpet player currently in Halifax, Nova Scotia on the East Coast. Um, I was born and raised in Newmarket and Ottawa, Ontario. And I joined the forces in 2011, like everyone else, through the Ceremonial Guard. Um, I first heard about it through my mom. Well, it's funny, being from Ottawa, I had watched the you know, ceremonies on Parliament Hill and remembering as a kid thinking they were about four hours long every day during the summer. I remember it just being very long. And um, my mom had told me about it. She had a patient, she's a physiotherapist in Ottawa and she had heard from a patient that, you know, you could audition to be part of the band and being a member of the Canadian Armed Forces. And shortly after a few months, I started my undergrad at University of Western Ontario and there were auditions coming through. So I auditioned and got in, started basic training at the age of 18. I think I was home during Easter weekend for a day and it was just, yep, go. <laughs> um, and at the time I remember everything just being very fast. Everything, you're learning things fast, you're getting from point A to point B fast, you're eating fast. I think I've had some of the quickest meals in my life on basic training. And I'm already a fast eater. It's in my family. So <laughs> um, so that was great. And then started my first summer with the Band of the Ceremonial Guard, which was great because I got to go home every summer for the next five summers throughout university. Um, after that, I did my master's at the University of Ottawa, and I joined the regimental band of the Governor General's Foot Guards for a few years. Um, 
and through a mutual friend I've, of a uh, few members in the band, I'd found out about a regular force audition. They needed trumpet players. So I put in a tape, put in a CD, and in 2017, in the summer, I found out that I was posted to the Staticona Band of the Royal Canadian Navy in Halifax. Yeah. Yes, that's wonderful. Thank you so much, Emily. And uh, let's um, just going to see, maybe it's good time for us to start looking at some questions. And I'm, I'm hearing, a, I'm seeing a first question here. Um, what advice would we give to prospective applicants into the CF, the Canadian Armed Forces for Music? Yes, um, Marie-Pierre. I think one thing I would say is just give it a try. Because sometimes we have all those ideas about what it actually is. and but it, it's hard to even for us it's hard to explain when you we're doing it and it's hard to give the big picture of what it is and it, it there are so many good things it is challenging and there are many things that are going to be challenging but it's going to make you a stronger person for sure more knowledgeable a better musician and you're going to i have come to really enjoy the community of the the Canadian armed forces more than even just my job because it's it's so much more than just being a musician so for anyone that's that's wondering, should I do it? I would just say, give it a try. And then once you get on basic training, the other word that I would keep in mind is teamwork. And that's what they're going to try and, and and have you learn is is teamwork. And sometimes you get there and you and and it's hard to see that. That's that's what's going. Sometimes it's hard to see that it's possible to go through basic training because at some point it's just it gets overwhelming and you're like, we're never going to be able to do it. But then if you if you ha actually start working as a team, that's when it gets easier. And that's when you can you can see and feel the strength of the team. So teamwork would be what I'm my biggest advice for basic training. All right, thank you, Marika. Um, how about what is the first step? Now we already heard one. Start getting in shape. Okay, that's great. Besides that. What other first step would you take to get yourself into um, the Canadian forces? It's different ways, of course. Yes, Emily. Um, I'd say to you have to be a bit of a squeaky wheel. Um, you really have to advocate for yourself, especially joining as a civilian. There's lots of paperwork that you've never seen before. And unless you have someone helping you, um, you still have to sort of put forward, you know, keep track of all your paperwork because it's a big organization and things get lost. You know, there's humans dealing with paperwork, so things get lost or, or you know, forgotten. Um, and I found that very useful for not just basic training or, or in recruiting, but just for the rest of my career, um, really advocating for yourself. Um, for career courses, for leadership experience, out of trade. Um, so that's something I would keep in mind is to stay as organized as you can with your paperwork. Very important. Thank you. And so you you mentioned uh, recruitment. Uh, what's the best place to get recruited? Yes? I would say... Oh. Oh, oh, go sorry. ahead. <laughs> we raise our hand together. Okay, uh, well, I, yeah, I, I could say at any uh, recruitment um, uh, office or at any in the reserve, at least you can go to any reserve uh, unit and ask for the recruitment section, and they're gonna ask you all your questions. Uh, they're gonna give you a briefing. They're gonna give you all the trades if you are not necessarily want to get into music, but in other trades, they're going to inform you about everything you need to know about the uh, uh, the army. Uh, so I would go to the unit, um, f at least for us, because uh, we don't necessarily necess necess <laughs> have a hard time with that word, sorry, <laughs> necessarily uh, have um, a recruitment office uh, in Quebec. Uh, it's more for the Red Force, but for the reserve, I would go to the units. 
Excellent. Thank you. And then Esther had something to say? Yeah, I think Madeline and I are thinking on the same wavelength because I was going to kind of start with that. But I would also say that because we're in an event that is focused on music, musicians and you have tons of us represented here today, if you are even thinking about it, I would highly recommend that you find your local reserve band or your reserve unit and just walk in, find ours. Um, for example, our, our band would often have people come in to enjoy, like join a rehearsal just so that they have a bit more context into what we do and we get to know whoever these people are. So highly recommend that if you can, you know, pick up your boots and just go and find somebody to talk to because that might make it or break it for you. You might join and say, this is not for me. Or you might join and say, hey, they're just normal people, which we are. And we just love really making music. We just have to wear the uniform uh, while we do it. So yeah, highly recommend that you stick around and ask questions today. Mm -hmm. Excellent, thank you. I saw Leslie's hand and then Natalie has her hand. And I have an ex a sec uh, another question to ask you after that. So uh, let's hear you, Leslie. Sure. Uh, so one of the awesome things about the reserves is that there is a reserve band in almost every major city or capital city in the 10 provinces. Um, so I believe the Directorate of History and Heritage website, which houses the music branch, has a directory of all the reserve bands across Canada. Uh, so definitely take a look and there's probably a reserve band near you. Um, myself, I uh, I, when I finished my undergrad at Laurier, I was working in Hamilton at the reserve unit there. Uh, and then I moved to Montreal for grad school and I was able to seamlessly transfer to, uh, to another reserve unit there and continue working as a musician. Uh, and it was awesome because I could keep paying for school and, uh, and making music. Cool. Thank you. And Natalie. Hey, um, and I just, uh, Thought to put it out there that um, for a lot of people, it's like the idea of basic training is like scary or you don't know what to expect or, you know, what you see in the movies, like people are yelling at you and, you know, you do have to run and do some push ups and things. But um, really, as long as you're, you know, in decent shape, try to be in shape and uh, be ready to stay awake. They give you all the uniforms. They tell you all the information you need to know. Like you don't have to study up before you get there because they're really going to give you all of that information and all the bits and pieces you need. Um, and so it is, it is a lot of work, but really like my IPI was saying, it's like teamwork. You make really great friends there for life. And, and I just have to acknowledge that Mary Pierre is one of the fittest people in the entire Canadian forces. <laughs> Our annual fit tests, you have um, bronze, silver, gold, and platinum levels. And even to get bronze, it's like, that's not just a pass. You can pass and not be at any of these levels. So to get bronze, like you're already in very good shape. And she, I think the last two years has been platinum, which is basically unattainable by most humans. <laughs> so, oh, wow. I get, a, I get a comment me. here from our friend Bob. He says it's the top 1%. Yeah. <laughs> That's in the Canadian forces, not just the band branch. But that is saying a lot. Thank you. <laughs> Good job, Marie-Pierre. <laughs> so I have a question for you guys. Um, oh, I, I just see Allison like... I just you want wanted to, to add something quickly? quick. Yeah. I just wanted to add something quick about preparing for basic. I cons When I prepared for basic, I consulted with uh, the CF fitness requirements, whatever was on the website. And I spent maybe eight or nine months working up to what it said, just to prepare myself for basic training. And I put a lot of work into that, right? But I got to basic training, and it was really easy. <laughs> like the requirements were harder than what we did. So if you like, you, you can refer to that. And if you work up to that, you're gonna have an easier time like physically on basic training. And yeah, like I said, it's not all push-ups in the mud and stuff. There is some of that, but there's a lot of sitting in a classroom just looking at PowerPoints and nobody ever talks about that. There's a lot of really easy stuff that you just have to sit there and witness. 
right? So it's not all really difficult. And yeah, if you follow the fitness requirements on the website, you'll have an easier time for sure. Thank you, Alison. So I have received a few questions and I think I'm going to ask this one because I think for our audit, uh, audience, it's going to be very important. They um, might want to know, how do you prepare for an audition? Yes, Marie-Pierre. Well, the, the first step is actually a recording that you're going to be sending in. So definitely on that recording, you need to be able to represent or to prepare whatever makes you shine, right? So work on your strength and present your strength to the, the Canadian Armed Forces because what you want for that first step is for your recording to go through that second step. So once you have something solid that you've recorded, you send it in. But then once you, well, I'll talk for how I prepared for mine. Um, so I'm, I'm not a classical legit trumpet player. I've done my studies in jazz performance and I, I also sing and stuff like that. So like my repertoire was not classical at all, which is what I showcased for my audition. But I also wanted to show that I was able to do the legit gig as well. So I put many, many different styles and many things because I think one of our, one of our, our main strength as Canadian Armed Forces musicians is versatility. We need to be able to perform in so many different contexts and so many different styles. That this is something you need to work on if you're if you're focused on only one style or, or one one type of music. I would say try and widen your options and your uh, your abilities so that you can present that as an audition material as well. So don't have only one thing that you've been working on that you want to present. Make sure that you are a well-rounded musician and that they see and they can hear that. Excellent. Thank you. Um, Emily has something to say also. Yeah, that was great. Just to add to that, um, I find it's different from for those in the freelance world who have done orchestra auditions. Um, you're only doing maybe, hopefully you get through all the rounds, but you might only be doing one or two rounds at a time. For a regular force audition, you go through all the rounds no matter what. Um, as a trumpet player, last post is requested. You play your solo repertoire. Uh, you play a feature for your instrument with the band that you're auditioning with. Um, there's also a jazz feature. And many people, I was the opposite. I My jazz chops were not <laughs> great. So I think I wrote out some of my solo, my jazz solo or chords or something as a as preparation. And, and then a smaller ensemble. So I played with uh, the brass quintet, a piece that was prepared and a sight reading piece. So... I found that different. It's sort of a full day affair of the audition uh, as opposed to sort of just one one round waiting around all day. But it's, yeah, I, I agree. The versatility is, is a big component of that. Did I see your hand, Madeline? No, okay. <laughs> so I'm trying to look at all the pictures and I have to catch you. Um, another question then, and this I think is fairly uh, relevant to us, is do you find that being a woman in the reserves is different than in the reg force. Now, of course, you have to have experience a bit of both, but. Yes, Marie-Pierre. So I have experienced both, both, but also I think it's hard to answer because I was also in in two different stages of my life when I was a reservist and now that I'm and, and then I was in the rake forces so like women are women men are men and like I, I don't think there's a huge difference in the way that we are perceived as reservists or as reg force musicians um but I don't know. It might be different for a reservist that's, reservist that's doing a contract with a reg force band. So like also you're you're new to the unit and you so so then you might be perceived as not as confident or and so then you might think that it's it's a it's an issue of gender. But I don't feel that there was a big difference in being a reservist and a and a or a reg force member as a woman. Thank you. Uh, whoa, I got. Uh, Allison and Leslie. Um, yeah, I would say like when I was in the reserves, I was in the army reserves 
And then when I switched from the army to the regular forces, I moved to the, the air force. So it's really hard for me to say the differences between like the reserves, because I think most of the differences I experienced were differences between army, air force, and then now being in the Navy. Um, yeah, but I've enjoyed all of them. <laughs> cool. So uh, would you say like for different reasons? Uh, that I've enjoyed them? Yeah. Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, okay. <laughs> Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Leslie. Uh, so just on the, the basic level of the reserves, there's just a lot of flexibility. Uh, so the commitment uh, to work in the reserves, you only actually are obliged to, to work once a month, once every 30 days. Uh, obviously, you're encouraged to, to come in as much as possible. Um, like Esther said, uh, most units work, uh, rehearse once a week, and then we have weekend engagements and sometimes additional training. Um, but there are also uh, exemptions to the, to the once per month rule. If you find that uh, maybe in your civilian life, you have uh, a lot on your plate and you can't really commit, uh, perhaps you're, you're schooling uh, this particular semester, you have classes that conflict with rehearsal times, or you have dependents or anything like that, that, that you really need to, to take some time off to care for, uh, you can be excused from, from duties for uh, a, a, as long a period as you negotiate with your chain of command, which is really great. And you can be offered that unpaid leave uh, to be able to take care of that. And I believe uh, the supplementary reserve was also mentioned if maybe you're going away to, to study abroad uh, and can't commit to the reserves, but you want to come back eventually, then that is also an option. So just having that flexibility is, is really awesome. I, I can't speak too much to, to the regular force, but, uh, but certainly that, uh, that is the case in the reserves. Okay, thank you. Um, we have one minute left. So I was just going to say, before we have our uh, last comment here, um, just wanted to let you know, we have three other sessions with lots of other subjects and questions related to our uh, careers of the military as musicians and as women um, brass players. And um, we're going to hear also some more videos of uh, our musicians performing for us. So. Um, Madeline, what did you want to say? Yeah, I just wanted uh, uh, to uh, talk just a quick minute about the uh, auditions in the reserve, which are not the same as uh, Marie-Pierre told and Emily told us uh, before. It's not like a full day, full band uh, tapes and stuff. Um, in my unit, uh, we asked the, um, the participant to play uh, two contrasted pieces and some scales as well as a uh, sight reading. So it's not as much as a regular force audition, just to clarify for the people who wants to join the reserve. So it's it's a little bit less than okay. what are required. Thank you, Madeline. It's already one o'clock, I mean, Pacific time. So I'm just going to invite everybody to take 10 minute break and we're going to see you again um, on the uh, sec session two summertime so we'll be right back thank you <laughs> 